Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode's going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is October 10th, 1953, and the title is How to Die for Nothing. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say, if there ever was a cereal designed to boost a family's breakfast morale, it's new sugar crinkles. Why, that sugar rice treat that's just right sweet makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Come breakfast time, just pour on milk. And you've got a breakfast main dish as you like it. Those golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice we call sugar crinkles are really special. Not too sweet, the way some sugar-coated cereals seem to be, and not like others that don't seem sweet enough. Sugar crinkles really are the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And whether you eat them from the bowl for breakfast, from the pack as a snack, or both ways, you love Sugar crinkles. Try them soon. And now, Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. Hand me that bottle, Zach. Been a long, dusty trail up from Texas. I don't care to ride into Dodge sober. Yeah. Be on that. Uh, uh, now, don't kill it. I'll come up the same trail uh, you did. Uh, I'm just as dry. Uh, uh, I hope I never see another moss horn steer. Now, I'm going to settle down and be a bartender or something easy like yeah. that. Tomorrow uh, you'll wish you was back trailing cattle. You wish you never seen Dodge. Hey, come on, my turn on that bottle. So by tomorrow, maybe there won't be no Dodge. Maybe we'll have torn it plumb apart. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, here's a cougar howl tonight. Yeah. And <laughs> hey, then look yonder. What? That there's Alla for a ganja. Let's start with it. Hey, tell him we're here, Zach. Show them how we live in Texas. Ah. <laughs> 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 All right, hold it there. Uh, put a bullet through his hat, Zack. Shoot his heels away. Get down off those horses. I sure I'll get down, mister. That's what I come here for. All the way from Texas. Well, you're welcome here. But don't get any notions about shooting up this town. Well, who are you, anyway? I'm a U.S. Marshal. And I'll take your gun till you're sober enough to carry it again. Nobody takes my gun. All right, then ride back to camp. Don't let him buffalo you, Zach. He won't. <laughs> Mister, I'm staying. Me and my gun. And there'll be a marshal for breakfast if you try to stop me. All right, I won't. I'm going to kill you for doing that. <laughs> It's awful close, Mr. Dillon. I saw the whole thing. Yeah, another drunken cowboy with more fire than sense. Well, you had to kill him. Yeah. Take his gun, Chester. Yes, sir. Give me that. Don't shoot me. No, nobody ain't gonna shoot you, mister. Get on your feet. Yeah, come on, get it. Oh. 
busted my head. You'll be all right. But your friend tried to shoot me. He's dead. Huh? You killed him. To keep him from killing me. There'd be trouble about this, Marshal. No. Don't you get anything like that started. Oh, not me. His brother, Howard Bulow. He's out the camp. I know him, Marshal. He'd come after you. All right, I'll be here. <laughs> you won't be like that. Howard wouldn't face no gunfighter. He shoots you in the back or from alley at night. I know him, Marshal. It'll happen. You want to bury your friend here or take him back to camp? I'll take him back to camp. All right, we'll help you time across his horse. We can use his rope, Chester. Yes, sir. More coffee here, Matt. Uh, no, no, thanks, Kitty. Can't say I blame you. You think a restaurant like Delmonico's could at least make good coffee? <laughs> I never saw a woman yet who didn't find fault with everybody's cooking but her own. <laughs> Women have more taste than men. That's yeah, all. sure. More arguments too. Matt. Yeah. That man you had to shoot today, his brother. Is that what's on your mind? Yeah, I suppose. I've been thinking. you never seen him. If he does ride into town, you won't be able to recognize him, will you? Well, let's say he'll probably be the first man who tries to shoot me in the back. Oh, Matt. Now, don't worry about it. It's been tried before. I'm still around. Come on. Let's get out of here. Okay. Sure. Front Street's not very crowded tonight. That's early. Hmm. Now, wait a minute. Huh? What is it? Now, that man leaning up against the post up there. Wait till he turns his head. I want to get a look at him. Someone you're after, Matt? Yeah, there. Yeah. Now it's someone who's after me. Bulow's brother. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Sure enough to ask him anyway. You stay here. All right. You looking for me, Bulow? What? Your name is Bulow, isn't it? Oh. I'll bet you're him. I'll bet you're the marshal. I am. I'll take your gun now. Well, take it. All right. That won't stop me. You'll get another gun and shoot me in the back, is that it? Any way I can, Marshal. Look, Bulow, your brother tried to kill me, and he'd have done it if I hadn't stopped him. Ain't nobody kills a Bulow and gets by with it. I don't care what he done. Well, maybe you need a few days to think it over. Maybe that'll help. I ain't got a few days. You have now. Turn around and walk straight ahead of me, Bulow. You're going to jail for a while. No, I ain't done nothing. Turn around and get moving. Marshal? What can I do for you? My name's Will Jacklin. I'm boss of the drag gar herd we're holding up river. I come for Howard Bulow. Oh. Uh-huh. I see. Well, turn him loose. No. No, I can't turn him loose. He didn't do a thing last night. He was just standing on the street the way I heard it. He threatened to shoot me in the back, and he says he's still gonna do it. You killed his brother, didn't you? In self defense. Don't matter, you'll have to look out for yourself. But none of my men's gonna lay in a Kansas jail when he ain't done nothing. None of your men's gonna walk free waiting to put a bullet in my back, either. I got eight men outside, Marshal. I got ten more with the cattle. We come a long way, we had a hard drive. We're all Texans, and no Dodge City Marshal's gonna rub our nose in dirt. Nobody's trying to, Jacqueline. Fine thing, they hire men like you to kill cowboys on a little spree. You call shooting me a little spree? You could have crippled him up. I wish that were true, but I couldn't take the chance. Another shot, and he'd have killed me. Talking's a waste of time. 
I want Bulo out of here. I'll do this. I'll turn him over to you when you've sold your herd and are headed back to Texas, if you promise to keep him with you. I want him now. Ah, no, not as long as he's set on killing me. Eighteen men I got, Marshal. Not counting myself. Fourteen of us will be back tonight. And we'll get him. Jacqueline. Don't try it. And after we get him, we'll really shoot your town up. You people have mistreated the last Texas cowboy you're going to. Tonight, Marshal. Have a beer, Matt. I'll even buy you one. Do you good? I can't be drinking now, Doc. Oh, Matt, I don't think they'll ride in like that tonight. Those cowboys always talk big. Yeah, maybe. And maybe they're just full of vinegar after the long drive they've had, huh? <laughs> now they want to hoop and holler something. Bulo's full of more than vinegar, Doc. You think so? A tooth for a tooth, huh? An eye for an eye. Oh, my, the world's got its evil ways, all right. Marshal Dillon. Marshal Dillon. Hello, Doc. Oh, hello, Risley. What are you going to do about those Texans, Marshal? Well, I don't know, Mr. Risley. I haven't given it much thought. Well, you better start thinking, Marshal. I heard that, Jacqueline, right in here this morning. He means what he says, that man. What did he say? They're going to destroy Dodge. That's what he said. Him and all those wild Texans he's got. Mr. Risling, the man I got in jail aims to shoot me from ambush if I turn him loose. But I can't help that, Marshal. Well, I can. And he's staying where he is until he comes to his senses. But what about the rest of us? It's all right for you to save your own skin, but what about us? They'll shoot up the town and maybe burn my hotel down. No, no, don't get all excited, Mr. Risling. It won't help matters any. Look, why don't you just forget about it? Jacqueline may never show up at all. Oh, that's what I come to tell you. What? Frank Paris rode by the Dragar camp a little while ago, and he says those men were just about to leave for Dodge. That means they'll be here any minute. Now, what are you going to do? family is getting weary of the same old breakfast cereal every morning, time to retire it and introduce him to new sugar crinkles. Say, new sugar crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And I'm here to tell you, sugar crinkles make breakfast more fun than a circus. Golden crisp nuggets of sugar-coated rice and every nugget in your breakfast bowl just right sweet. Forget your experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet and with others that don't seem sweet enough. Treat yourself and your favorite family to new sugar crinkles at breakfast time and at snack time, too. For your breakfast or a snack, you love sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles can't be beat. Sugar ice cream that's just bright sweet. With milk for the breakfast joy. As a snack from the pack, oh boy. Can't be beat. Just bright sweet. Sugar crinkles good to eat. Now back to Gunsmoke. I left the yellow braganza and walked over to the jail to wait for Jacqueline and his mob of cowboys. There I tried to have a talk with Bulow. The only response I could get out of him was the same. He was going to kill me the first chance he got. Well, maybe Doc was right. Maybe the hard life of the cattle trail did drive man a little mad. Anyway, it was a poor choice they'd given me. And I didn't like it. You be wanting a shotgun, won't you, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Chester. Here you are. Ah. Uh... Chester, hmm? you uh, don't have to get mixed up in this, you know. I know that. My. 
I think I'm going to take a shotgun, too. <laughs> okay. All right, let's wait outside. Huh? Yes, sir. About ten feet apart, huh? All right, sir. There they come, Mr. Dillon. All of them. Yeah. Yeah, it is, man. Hello, Marshal. You're acting like a fool, Jacqueline. We'll see about that. You make trouble here and the law will be after you wherever you go. I don't worry none about no law. I was raised plum free. We all were. Yeah, sure you were. But that doesn't leave you free to form a mob, raid a jail, shoot up a town. What's the matter with you men? What's the matter with you? You put an innocent man in jail. Any man who wants to kill somebody isn't very innocent, Jacqueline. Do you have to wait till he does it? I don't have to wait for nothing. Marshal, we've come for Bulow. Uh, let, let them have him, Marshal. Turn him loose. Hurry. You keep out of this, Risewing. He's right, Marshal. You let him go peaceable and we'll leave town. But if you make us fight, we'll go right on fighting. Now, you heard him. He means it. Now, you do it. Shut, Shut up, up Risewing. Yeah. Jacqueline, this is a shotgun I'm holding. The first move you or any of your men make, I'll cut you in two with it. Maybe. But we're too many. You can't kill us all. You'll die, and so will your friend there. That right, man? Texas men ain't afraid to die, Marshal. But they ain't gonna get tromped on. I'm through talking, Marshal. Get set, men. And when you finish him, go rip this town wide open. Do it for me. Chester. Yes, sir. Go get Bulo. All right. Oh, thank heaven. You used your head, Marshal. You and I'd both been dead if you hadn't. I'm not doing it because of you or me, Jacqueline. I'm doing it because too many other men would have died. Well, it don't matter. As long as you turn him loose. All right, bring him over here, Chester. Well, I knew you couldn't keep me long, Marshal. And you were right, Bulo. You shouldn't have locked me up at all. Go on back to camp and try to do some thinking while you're there, huh? Sure, Marshal. And you know what I'll be thinking about? You, sitting next to an open window, or walking down a dark street. I'm going to kill you, yes. Wherever he was from, whatever kind of life he'd led, Bulow was a primitive man. Somewhere he'd heard about revenge. It's a simple idea, an eye for an eye. And he took it to heart. I realize now that there was no dealing with him. The man was incapable of change. And Jacqueline wasn't much better. But I forgot about Jacqueline. It was Bulow who'd be back. Still, two days went by, and there was no sign of him. There's a couple of chairs, Mr. Dillon. Let's sit there. All right, Chester. Well... Nobody can't shoot you from here, not unless it comes up in front. Oh, well, it's unlikely with Bulow. What's the matter with men like him? Oh, I don't know, Chester. Too rough a life, maybe. The war. Oh, a lot of things. Well, he's plumb crazy, if you ask me. Say, ain't that Miss Kitty coming up the street? Hmm? What's yeah. she walking so fast for? Oh, I don't know. Oh, there you are, Matt. Hello, Chester. Evening, Miss Kitty. Sit down, Kitty. You'll wear yourself out being in such a hurry. Matt, all this, huh? I've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, trouble? For you, yeah. Bulow's back in town. Well, have you seen him? No. 
Sam did. Said he stopped in for a drink a little while ago. Is he still there? He left, but he told Sam he's got a room at the Dodge house. He might be there. Well, I'd like to find him before he finds me. At least we could see each other that way. Be careful, Matt. Uh, you better come along, Chester. Four eyes are better than two. Yes, sir. Thanks, Kitty. I'll see you later. Yeah, sure. What do you do if we find him, Mr. Dillon? Well, it's no good talking to him anymore. Maybe I can scare him out of it somehow. I sure hope so. The hotel looks pretty empty from here. Marshal. Chester. Hello, Mr. Isley. I'm looking for Bulo. Is he here? I don't, Martin. He shoots me. I want to know if he's here, Risley. He went upstairs a few minutes ago, Marshal. Which room? More now, Marshal. On the landing, Marshall. Mr. Dillon. Ah, I missed him. Come on. in one of those rooms. Here we've got him now. Yeah, but I don't know which one. You stay here, Chester. I'm going down the hall. He might come out of any one of those doors. All right, sir. Okay? Yeah, it's okay, Chester. He didn't hit you, did he? No, he tried, but it was too late. He was already dying. Well, I'm sure glad. Yeah. But he died about as uselessly as a man could, Chester. For no reason at all. None at all. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. If you want to be a real good scout, Mom, tell you what you do. See that your whole tribe sits down to post toasties for breakfast in the morning. What a way to start the day for every big and little Indian in your wigwam. You see, post toasties are heap good cornflakes, spankin' fresh, crisp, with that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted right in. It's a feather in your cap to serve them. Sure, because post toasties are not only the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it, Post Toasties are the best thing that ever happened to breakfast. And say, if you want to make a good thing even better, add your favorite fruit to that bowl full of Post Toasties, sugar, and milk. Mmm, it's mighty delicious nourishment. Get Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes, next time you shop. <laughs> Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, and John Damon. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kay. Ken Peters speaking. You know, you get more out of life yourself when you help others. So don't miss your greatest opportunity. Help the poor, the sick, the troubled in your community. Pledge enough to the one campaign that helps them all. Give generously to your community chest. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, meets Yorkie Kelly during his fight to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Listen next week at this time when Gunsmoke will be brought to you by Post Toasties, 
the heap good cornflakes. Sanka Coffee and Instant Sanka, the two delicious coffees that let you sleep, bring you Sanka Salutes. And this is Win Elliott transcribed, saluting our people of the week, the everyday people who help make America an even nicer place in which to live. For longer than millions of us have been alive, you have been an American legend. Even though you had been in retirement since 1932, your name was never forgotten. Because you, as the poem said, were a dandy guy named Sandy. Earl Sandy, the grinning jockey who booted home three winners at the Kentucky Derby, who had ridden man of war, who had truly been a champ. So you retired some 20 years ago, and you did a lot of things, and few of them had the glitter of the legend that somehow seemed bigger and richer than ever. The big purses had mostly been spent. The big records had been broken. And so this week, at the age of 54, you, Earl Sandy, because being a jockey was the thing you did best, you went back to it. You, the great Earl Sandy, rode an ordinary horse sitting on a borrowed saddle, riding in a routine race. You took your reputation and you put it on the line. Well, you didn't win, but you didn't lose either. Your horse came in third. You rode him gallantly, and you said you'd race some more. So, Earl Sandy, whatever the odds might be, you'll be the favorite with me. Welcome home, champ, with this Sanka salute. Say, you ex-GIs from World War II, this is about a pal of yours, very good pal, who was with you on the transports and in Anzio and across in the Pacific. The little guy, the honest guy, who'd walk up and say, what's your name, soldier? I'm Ernie Pyle. Yes, beloved Ernie Pyle, the soldier's reporter, the man who wrote your war as you saw it, who died as you might have died, from a sniper's bullet on a lonely, miserable road. Well, this week, they dedicated a plaque in Ernie's memory of his old school, Indiana University. And a lot of big names were there. General Bradley, important editors, people like that. But you know something, fellas? Mostly you were there. All of you there in spirit. The plain G.I.s whom Ernie Pyle immortalized and who will never forget him. So in your names, with the memories of Anzio and Iran and Okinawa, we send to Ernie Pyle's memory this Sanka salute. Now, in a moment, I want to ask some of you to do me a personal favor. But first, I want to ask all of you three questions about the coffee that you're drinking now. One, is it a good, full-flavored coffee? Two, is it easy to make? And three, does it let you sleep? You see, unless you can answer yes to all three, you're missing out on one of the best coffee buys in years, the new Instant Sanka coffee. It's the only coffee in the world that gives you all three of those advantages. Now, to prove it, make a cup hot and black and good and strong. And as soon as you taste it, you'll know it's got the extra rich flavor you want. And while you're making it right in the cup, you'll see how easy it is to prepare. It's a cinch whether you're making one cup or a dozen. And you'll prove that you can drink instant sack as late as you want, too, and sleep. That's because 97% of the sleep-disturbing caffeine has been removed. So look for instant sack in the new economy size jar. It'll save you money. Try instant sack, the only coffee that combines extra rich flavor with instant ease. And lets you sleep. Want to do me a favor? Well, if you live in Havistraw, New York, or if you're passing through, ask someone where you can find a blind old Airedale named Rags. And when you find her, give her a pat from me and maybe a hunk of hamburger, too. Why? Well, Rags has just retired from a voluntary lifetime as assistant mailman up there in Havistraw. You see, each day she accompanied a mailman on his rounds. And now Rags is too old to carry the mail, and she can't see anymore. The postmaster general wrote her a letter. Maybe she understood it, and maybe she didn't. But the old dog does understand Pats, of course. So will you give her one for me? Thanks. And also present to her special delivery, this Sanka salute. Well, I'll be back next week when Sanka Coffee and Instant Sanka, both delicious and both caffeine-free, will again present Sanka Salutes. In the meantime, this is Win Elliott suggesting you try Sanka. You love it, and you'll sleep. This is the CBS Radio Network. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. 
Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.